So welcome to well another episode of the Talking Balls podcast. The Snooker podcast comes with you out to you every Wednesday. Um, I'm Michael Wright, your host, Righto74 on Twitter, and I'll let my co-host say hi as well. Yeah, hi everyone. Welcome aboard. It's Lee here. Uh, we've got a great player on board this this morning here. Uh, broke through in the Welsh Open last year. So really looking forward to the chat. Absolutely. So yeah, so just a big thank. Well, as with everybody who comes on, a big thank you that you're willing to spend some time with us, and very grateful for your your time and and uh, and getting on with us. So, big welcome to as as uh, as Lee said there made a big impact last season with the Welsh Open, um, beating Ronnie O'Sullivan no less in the last frame decider. I'm sure most of us watched that, and um, it's a big welcome to Jordan Brown. Hi, Jordan. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming. So, how, how are you feeling? I mean, how's things going today? How do we find you today? How's the season so far? Yeah, uh, everyone's good at the minute. I'm very happy with my game. Very happy with the way the season's going. I had a bit of a disappointing start the first half of the season. Uh, I think it's still fair to say I had a little bit of a hangover still from the Welsh Open. You know, it took a long time for me to recover from that. Um, but I started getting results. Uh, started getting, you know, a bit of a run in tournaments again. So, uh, yeah, things are looking good. Stuff. So, and how's uh, you say about? We'll go into the Welsh Open a bit more, but you say almost a hangover from it and getting getting over it in a way. Do you want to just say a little bit more? Is that about the you know the media interest and the kind of just generally the focus on yeah, what you achieve? Yeah, I think the world uses expectation, um, right. expectation from the public, uh, but mainly expectation on myself. Um, mm. Um, I sort of hope to push on, you know, from that from that win, and maybe not not win tournaments straight away, like you know, but you know, I had a few first round defeats, and you know, I was hoping to do you know obviously a lot better than that. Um, but you know, it's it's going to take time. Uh, I know from a few other players' experiences, like so, uh, Karen Wilson, Bishop Bingham, basically told me whenever they first won tournaments that they struggled the following season. Right. So. Um, and they're two top players in their own right. So, um, from what they're saying, I've, I've not much to worry about. It's just uh, reform just is gonna is gonna come eventually. So, yeah, I suppose Jordan, you've just got to you know, keep plugging away, and uh, as, as you say, it's got to be hard, you know, being on such a high when the Welsh Open, and then having to try and replicate that. And of course, after the Welsh Open, uh, was it the, was it the Players Championship or the, the yeah. champion? You played John Higgins, and he was just unplayable that week, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, what happened was uh, I won it on the Sunday night and had to travel to Milton Keynes the following the Monday morning. Um, literally no time to sort of prepare for anything, really. Uh, all I had was uh, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of uh, ITV interviews, um, local newspapers, you name it. They were all after me. Mm-hmm. Um, the, it was just overwhelming, and... It was something that I, I wasn't prepared for um, and never really uh, knew what to expect. So um, it was all that there and basically didn't give myself a chance to breathe. And then little did I know uh, what was coming. Uh, I had annihilation <laughs> for John Higgins. Uh, that made me feel a little bit better that he carried on that form uh, for the rest yeah. of the week. But um, yeah, I got, got what I deserved. Um, it was just still on cloud nine, to be honest, in the Welsh. And it was funny, whenever John shook my hand after a match, he just says, listen, I know what you're going through. You just go home for a few days and uh, have a beer with your family and friends. And I thought that was you know, a touch of class from, from John. So, Yeah, he comes across as a really classy guy. But as you say, he just kept that form going. I think he restricted Selby to seven points. You know, yeah. in, in their match, which is really incredible and unthinkable. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I mean, I, I think I managed the 150 break. Uh, I should have, yeah. I should have the sixth frame. I should have I missed an easy pink to go five one. But then, whenever I, I heard that Selby only scored seven points, I said, "Well, I scored a few more points than Selby." So, or, <laughs> so that uh, made me feel a little bit better. So that's a win. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> 
So uh, and I guess you're finding that from what you said, you're already talking about, you know, some of the pros saying, yeah, I've been there. It gets, you know, it gets a little easier, but it's tough at the start. It feels like there's a, a warmth around it. There's players on the tour who, who, you know, can see where you're at and want you to do well, even though you're competitors. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you get that vibe uh, from from all, from most of the players. Um, no, no, other than the following day when I was in Milton Keynes, everybody was getting ready for the players' championship, and I walked into the breakfast room, and then it was almost like a standing ovation, and we were just in for breakfast, you know, and everybody coming up <laughs> and congratulating me, and um, you know, I think even my fellow competitors recognised, you know, the significance of what I achieved. So, uh, yeah, it was nice, you know, and I'm, I'm no different. I, I'm always the same to every other player, you know, whoever does well. You know, it's you, you just you do nothing but congratulate them because then the day we're all here to win. But, you know, off the table, uh, there's there's a good vibe amongst the players. Yeah, I mean, it was you can't underplay this really, can you? I mean, if I'm reading this right, I think it was you were the lowest ranked player to win a ranking tournament since 1983. I'm pretty sure yeah, I read. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is which is something else, isn't it? And one of only, what is it now? One of four players from Northern Ireland now who have won a ranking event: Alex Higgins, Dennis Taylor, Mark Allen. It's nice to join that list, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, Alex and Dennis. I mean, they're local heroes of ours. You know, I, I watched these guys. You know, growing up, uh, and I, and I still watch the old YouTube videos of you know Alex back in his heyday and even Dennis. Um, you know, they were heroes of mine growing up and very, very proud of where I come from. And obviously Mark uh, is doing so well now. You know, he's we're, we're the only two players pros from Northern Ireland. Um, and he's the standard bearer uh, for all, like, young amateurs uh, coming through in this country as well. So, um, yeah, the, the being amongst that, that field is, is a great achievement for me. You're talking about, uh, like, say, Dennis Taylor and Alex Higgins being a, a big inspiration for you, Jordan, back in the day. Is that what got you into snooker, is watching those guys play? Uh, well, I'm a big follower of the history of, of the game. You know, ever since a young age, I was just fascinated by it. And uh, obviously, you got those two. And uh, I just saw Stephen Hendry um, mm -hmm. winning all those titles, lifting all the trophies. I used to actually be shocked if he ever lost a match. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I just looked up to all those guys and, you know, I, I do uh, admire somebody like Stephen who was just a winning machine. Um, mm -hmm. So that, I, I knew instantly from a young age uh, what exactly what I wanted to do. So, yeah, they were huge inspiration. So that, that's what really kicked it off for me. Have you taken anything from them? I mean, I'm sure you're your own man in terms of how you play and how you line yourself up, but have you taken much out of watching some of these guys in terms of learning about their mental approach or you know, their resilience? Um, have you taken, I guess the, the short question to a long but ramble for me is, have you taken stuff from the people you've watched? Yeah, um, I think... Yeah, you do, you do still... I'm still learning uh, from the guys that are, you know, who are regularly winning on TV, the Trumps, the Ronnies, the, the Robertsons. Mm. You just watch about how they go about their business and uh, see what they're doing differently to you. Um, yeah, it's 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 an incredible mindset, you know, some, mm. some of the players that are on tour, because standards are so good nowadays. But yeah, uh, from the players from years ago, yes, uh, I was learning how to break ball, just the basics, you know, and cue action and, you know, basically just copying um, most things that they were doing. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's all part and parcel of, you know, the, the player that I am today. And of course, uh, you're a big friends with Mark Allen and, and Mark had, must have had a big say, you know, in your development uh, in the game. Yeah, uh, hugely. Um, just, to, just to touch on, um, like, the learning process. Uh, I see uh, firsthand, you know, how good Mark is in practice and see what he does uh, day in, day out. Um, you know, just just picking up wee things here and there. See, you know, just see how he, he makes it as easy as it looks. You know, and and it's an incredibly skillful thing to do. Um, so yeah, I'm very very thankful to have him. You know, in my, in my corner. You know, I can always ask him questions, and he and even now he he asks me questions. Uh, you know, just you know, just to pick pick on my brain a wee bit. You know, just to see if he's fascinated anything. So yeah, it's 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 a, it's a great asset to have. I mean. It's, it's always beneficial for any player to have somebody who's, you know, a little bit better than you or as good as you, you know, in your, in your journey ahead. So. 
Yeah, I mean, in Northern Ireland and, and the area you're in is, is quite a small, you know, area, but there's so many mm. talented players in Northern Ireland, isn't there? I mean, for being a small area. Oh, loads. There were so many. I, I, I can, don't even know where to start. And the amount of amateur players who, who didn't make it, who I thought were probably good enough to make it. Mm -hmm. uh, probably their lifestyle just caught on with, up with them in the end. Uh, but there's so many talented players. Uh, likes of um, likes of Sean O'Neill, a little bit before my time, and had the likes of Kieran McMahon, Martin O'Neill, um, Julian Logue. So, so many good good players, you know, and they were dominating the Northern Ireland team, but just couldn't quite have what it what it takes to, to break onto the pro scene. And yeah, it was a shame really, you know, because we, we, we should have uh, had a lot more uh, players uh, breaking yeah. on the pro scene if there was a different uh, different lifestyle and uh, all those names that I mentioned. Yeah. Um, we, we recorded just the other day with, with another name that you'll know very well, um, Paddy Wallace. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it was great. It was really, really enjoyable. I'm sure Lee, Lee, Lee kind of goes back a bit further with him, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, you know, just just what uh, it was impressive his achievements. But then you kind of, you know, you look back to that time, and both him and Billy Snadden said similar things around the thought that if they were playing these days with the amount of tournaments you've got, they think they might have won a bit more. It was it was in their day. There wasn't so much they could go at, um, but they can see how competitive it is. But also. The availability of, of tournaments now you know it's kind of one after the other really isn't it yeah it's a fair comment um michael it's uh, years ago uh, i mean for instance whenever i first broke onto the pro scene it was like i think it was about 12 years ago uh only one season six ranking events it wasn't wasn't great to be honest it was basically a part i was basically a part-time I, I couldn't even call myself a professional player because yeah. there was very little money in the game you had to win a like a load of matches just to even get a couple of grand, you know, and uh, I felt sorry for the guys uh, from years ago because I do think if he had the terms that we had now, I do think that, yeah, it would have got a lot lot out of the players from years ago. Um, uh, yeah, I definitely do believe that. And, uh, did, you know, I, th I think back then, I think uh, was it you dropped off in 2009 or you got back on. I think you're it's fair to say maybe your dedication suffered a bit to the, to the sport. Uh, could you talk us through that a wee bit and how you turned that around? Yeah, uh, God, that was that was uh, that was a bit of a torrid time to be honest. It was more self inflicted to be honest. I fell out of love the game a wee bit and wasn't really practicing. I wasn't dedicating my life to it. You know, from the the, the game that I loved from a young age, I just I was basically throwing it away. I was just concentrating on go down the pub with my friends, I was doing a bit of gambling, I was, it's all the things that you just shouldn't be doing because soccer's all about sacrifice, it's a, it's a single minute yeah. sport, um, but I quickly realised that what I was doing obviously wasn't helping me, so um, came a point about five, six years ago where I just set myself right, I'm in my late 20s now, just, I've got one one last chance, just give it one, more, one last proper go, um, and yeah, I was working on a full-time job, and apart from that, I was always down at the practice table, just putting the hours in, and just just to see where it took me, really. And, uh, well, yeah, it was an amazing turnaround from, from then. I started winning a few ranking tournaments back home and started getting my confidence up and starting believing, right, you know, I can turn professional again. And ultimately, that happened a few years ago, so... Yeah, and obviously the, the time you decided to really make a go at it and push on, you did say you're working full time. Um, yeah. How, how hard was it to sort of do the snooker and a full time job at the same time? It was very hard, Lee. Um, I was getting up uh, half five, uh, half half six most most mornings, uh, just going in to do his day's work. I was getting home, having a sleep. Maybe because I was so tired from the, the the job that I was in, uh, then going in and practicing until maybe midnight some nights. Uh, just mm. it, it was long, long days, but you know I, I still I wouldn't change it because uh, if I hadn't have done that, you know I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. You know that I'd still think back to those times. You know there were I call them dark days, but you know there were good days as well because um, I sort of I sort of toughened me up as a player and as a person. 
uh, as a whole. Yeah. So yeah, it's it definitely definitely was a big big turnaround in my life. You said you said this the other day, Lee, uh, on the chat. I think it was with Paddy. You said you can't have the rainbow without the rain. Isn't that what you said? Yeah, yeah. If you if you want the the rainbow, you're going to have to put up with the rain. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It's, uh, I've got I, I, we I put something out there, Jordan, just on social media to say you were coming on and see if there's anybody wanted to ask questions or had any comments. And I've got one for you. Um, it came out on on Instagram, and it's somebody you know, I think, who, who called Steph Coyle. Yep. Um, Thund Thunder Shots One Four Seven. She she calls herself. Now, what she said was that you guys you played Mark Allen and Steph in Masters Homecoming event in 2018 at the Antrim Forum. Mm. Um, now, what she's asked is, would you like a rematch? Because she fancies beating you this time. Well, yeah, if we get an exhibition organised, uh, whenever that may be, then, then certainly I'll be up for that, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was an exhibition uh, show then, that's what she's talking about. Yeah, I, I think I actually remember it. It was the Antrim, it was in the Antrim Forum uh, and it was Mark's homecoming. It was just after he won mm. the Masters and I think he put up an exhibition just for the, the, the Antrim, you know, people who have supported him over the years and um yeah it was it was a good night that and uh, i think mark went on 147 that night as well and wow. doubles with a couple of locals so um yeah it was no that was a good night and it was a good welcome home for him as well going back a little bit you know when we talk about the welsh and now you're much you're much more of a player than just the welsh open winner and we, we can just focus on that sometimes but i'm really fascinated by it and that build up I really like hearing people's stories when they reflect on their build-up in the tournament and how they've gone further. And we kind of forget sometimes, we know how you won and who you beat and the way you did it, but on the way you beat Mark Selby and Stephen Maguire, I mean, you, you beat top quality pros on the way who in their own right could have been in that final. I mean, at what point when you were through that tournament did you think, actually, this this could be my one? This could work for me, this one? Or did well, you? Yeah, well... <laughs> I'll give you a funny story. Uh, uh, even before the tournament started, it was actually the, whenever the day when we were flying over, I was flying over with Mark, and he said to me whenever we landed, because uh, I was just getting something out of my suitcase, and he says, um, have you not packed your waistcoat? And I goes, well, sure, you don't need a waistcoat, because uh, it's it's only the black shirt that you wear in the Home Nations events. Yeah. And uh, the Players' Championship was the following week, and I knew I needed to get to the, the final. He says, uh, well, sure, if you get to the final list, you're going to need your waistcoat, aren't you? And I says, oh, you're having a laugh, aren't you? <laughs> so little did I know, um, whenever I got to the quarters and obviously it was getting closer to, you know, that happening, I was like panic stations. As soon as I beat Mark Selby, I was like phoning my girlfriend back home and said, can you send my waistcoat over? <laughs> uh, just, 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 just in case. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, I always remember that moment. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a struggle uh, even before I played Selby and Maguire. I won like three Final Frame Desires. And yeah. it was like, you know, it could have easily went out because the, the people who had played, they had chances in each of the, the deciding frames and it could have easily not been even there at all. So, um, yeah, to, to beat the people like players like Mark Selby and Steve Maguire, yeah, it was, mm. it was, it was so much achievement, yeah. Well, I've, I've got the information here, Jordan. You actually survived five deciders. And yeah. that went to win. Uh, Sam Craigie, Alexander Urschenbacher, Mark King, Mark Selby, and obviously Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final. Mm. And, you, you know, in the final, you know, you got your chance in the decider and you made a fantastic 74 break to, to win that. You know, were, were you shaking? Yeah, uh, I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't, but um, I remember that break and I just thought, just give me one chance. And thankfully, well, Ronnie flicked a red and he looked at me in like disgust and it was like, God, I might not even get a shot here. And then he went for a long blue and thankfully he missed it. Uh, so as soon as the chance came, I was just saying, right, just give every single shot 100%. Uh, that, that's all I said, just 100% every shot. Um, just control control your nerves, uh, show show composure like I had been all week, you know, because I thought I, I showed good resilience, you know, throughout the tournament. So... Um, yeah, it just it just all it just all came a bit naturally to me to be honest with you. Uh, just just held myself together and just did what I did previously. Just go through the motions and uh, yeah, 
thankfully, um, I, I didn't go too overboard in my celebrations. But I just, I sort of couldn't help myself. You know, I just sort of give it a good fist pump and. Uh, yeah, it was just a relief more than anything. Uh, you know, I was absolutely delighted to, to finally get over the line against, in my opinion, the greatest of all time. Yeah, and, and Ronnie's, um, you know, he's kind of renowned for being a bit funny about things at times, but he's always been gracious in defeat as far as I've been able to see. Um, he had some nice words to say about you at the end. Yeah, um, and, and to be honest, you don't get that, that too often from Ronnie. He's usually the first one that wants to leave the, the building, you know, and uh, he actually stayed until he lifted, lifted the trophy, and you, you don't usually see that from Ronnie. Uh, but mm -hmm. you can tell what he said in his, in his speech at the end, you know, he, he meant it, and he, I think he was genuinely happy for me. I think he was even more happier for me than he would have been if, if he had won, won the title. Um, I think he would have been obviously devastated if I hadn't won. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was it was a good feeling. And then he came up to me during the week in the player championship and just congratulated me again. We had a chat and uh, we became good friends now. So yeah, that's that's nice to sort of have a, a good friendship with someone like that. Yeah, fantastic. And I know you were busy. You know, you're heading off to a, a tournament uh, the, the following morning, and there was a lot of restrictions in place. You never got a chance to celebrate your win. But I, I take it that came eventually. Yes, uh, that was my only regret after winning the tournament. You, you sort of, it was like, well, I was holding the trophy up and I didn't know what to do. There was no no crowd, no, no anything. So it was, all I could do was just like, you know, hold it in front of the cameraman and the, the, the World Signature staff. Um, that was my only one one regret about the whole thing, just not, not, like not giving somebody a hug, you know, just to sort yeah. of embrace it all. Um, but I made up for it back home. There was a little bit of a parade uh, whenever I got back home, a socially distanced one, although when the people couldn't help themselves. They were coming up and <laughs> hugging me and like, yo, you're a distance. And uh, I think I got a bit of a talent off and more sticker the following day just to give yeah. me a warning about it. But uh, yeah, listen, it was all good. Um, we actually had a party there in the summer because that's how late we, we had it, you know, after all the restrictions, you know, sort of eased a wee bit. So, yeah, we made up for lost time and uh, had a bit of a party in, in the club back home. Brilliant. And how do you say about, you know, how life's changed, Jordan? You know, I mean, I, I wonder if you can tell us more about what's changed. Obviously, there was a flurry around the time that you won and, um, and now, you know, things go viral. I'm sure lots of people tuned in because they heard you were, you were competing, you, were, you had a chance of winning. Um, you know, media interest, sponsorship, what what's changed for you in the you know in that past? Well, it's almost a year now, really, isn't it? Well, I, I think I'm still the same person. I'm not I'm not one to sort of gloat and say, "Oh, I'm well Open champion," and I'm like that. There, I'm just I'm still I'm still a, a good family man, and I'm I'm, I'm very uh, very level headed, you know. And and I know my roots, you know. I still go and uh, just do my same same old thing before even before I won that tournament. So. Um, yeah, it's it obviously the, the money helped. You know, I managed to buy a house and buy a nice car, and um, uh, so yeah, it's just the simple things in life that just keep me happy. You know, and um, very very grounded that way. Um, and yeah, it's it's nice. You know, it's it's a little bit more comfortable than I was. Yeah, but you know, still, I'm a very hard worker and very hard practicer, and uh, just I, I, I want more. You know, I'm almost going to be striving for that. Yeah, yeah. And, and in terms of around you then, you know, I mean, obviously now when people talk about you, they can call you the Welsh Open champion and they can talk about, yeah. the, you know, the lower rank to, to, to spring a, a surprise, etc. But, you know, is, is it any easier with sponsorship? Is it any easier now? I mean, I'm sure you all have to fight really hard anyway to, to keep that profile. But is, is, is it like, is life easier without you necessarily changing? But is life easier around you in terms of getting that attention and profile? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, well, sponsorship for a start. You know, I've got a little bit of sponsorship from uh, local country guards in Bellamina. Uh, their BMW guards. Uh, they managed to, just to give me a, a little bit of help with travel expenses and stuff. And whenever I won the Welsh Open, they called me up and says, uh, "How do you like your cars?" So <laughs> I managed to get you managed to get a good deal in the car. But um, yeah, I'm very very thankful for them. It's just uh, and they've managed to keep on sponsoring me uh, this season. So I'm very very thankful for that. Um, but yeah, the the attention, yeah, it's sort of 
people look at me in a different way. I get a little bit of attention whenever, even whenever I'm going out for a walk, you know, people say, oh, wow. oh, they sort of look at me twice and sort of say, <laughs> you know, are you who I think you are? And it's like, you know, the, listen, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a person that plays snicker, you know, I'm, I'm the sort of person that doesn't really like all the attention right. anyway, you know, I just like to keep myself to myself and, uh, but yeah, it is nice, you know, whenever people come up and graduate you and, um, you know, they're still like, I, I live about uh, 40, 40 minutes away from the hometown of Antrim now, but I still go every day to practice. And whenever I see people that I haven't seen in, in ages, you know, they, they manage to still come up and, and sorry, congratulate me now. So yeah, it, it is, it is nice to have that, you know, um, it's, uh, it's a great feeling. Yeah, and I think, no, go so, on, go on. I was just going to say, I think we should maybe uh, talk about when you made, you made it to the Crucible, you know, in 2020, uh, yeah. obviously it must've been a weird experience with no crowds or whatever, but, you, you know, you had a tough round to make it to the Crucible. You had Rory McLeod, Hussein Fafai, and to get to the, the TV stages, you, you beat Ryan Day 10 6. Yeah, no, great, great experience. It was, um, first of all, can I say that the, the lockdown experience before that, you know, it was it was a horrible experience, not, well, not just for me, but for mm -hmm. everyone, of course. Um, but Honestly, I didn't even know when the, the tour was going to start again, and, and and that just goes to show how worse, how much worse like, are, you know how hard they work is they managed to get tournaments back on board, and yeah, those players are very very thankful that we're still able to play. Um, but this is nowhere of a lie. I was down in my last you know, couple of hundred quid even before I won. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. we're we're all self employed at the end of the day, and there was there was just no money coming in, so um. It was it was Sweatsville, I must admit. <laughs> so going into the World Championships, I knew going into my match against Rory McLeod, I knew I had to win the Keep Mature card. So that was pressure in itself, you know, let alone financially. Uh, so once I won that, I was sort of like on a bit of a free roll. Um, sort of that was a big, big weight off my shoulders. I knew I was safe for the next two years. And I think it sort of helped me relax a little going into my last two games. Uh, I remember the match against the scene. It was an incredible match. Both of us played really, really well. And I remember he was 5-3 up and he was on a break of 20-odd. And he broke down. Uh, and if he gets on a red, I remember he broke down getting going into the pack, I think. And if he gets on a red, it's match over. And I'd be yeah. down the wider. And I think that sort of sparked me in the life. I managed to make a couple of big breaks. I made it 70-odd in the last frame. And then... Going in against Ryan Day, I had absolutely nothing to lose, you know. But it's every it's every person's dream, and that to play at the Holy Grail of our sport, yeah. to play at the Crucible. I knew what was at stake; I was fully aware of it. Um, uh, but again, I was so calm throughout the match, and uh, just just because the the weight of you know keeping my tour card, you know, that was just you know all I wanted to do going in that week. Um, but yeah, whenever I managed, to, I actually was sixty up behind in the last frame against Ryan. I managed to clear with a couple of 30 breaks. I managed to win on the black. And it was just because he was starting to come back at me. If it went 97, 98, it would have been a bit of a twitch fest. But the final yeah. game uh, was, was something else. And it was uh, it was just a dream come true to finally reach the you know the pinnacle of our sport. Yeah, and of course, that, that game against Ryan, you were six all at a point. So it was a really yeah. close game. And you took the last four frames. But then, obviously, in the TV stages, you had Mark Selby. Mm. And obviously, a really tough game against Mark. I don't know, would he yeah. be defending champion at that time? Uh, was he? Um, yeah, no. Yeah, I think he was. No, he won't, no I think Chubb was. I think Chubb, Chubb. Chubb was the defending champion, yeah. Uh, but, listen, it was obviously a tough job. But I actually didn't mind it because if you're going to if you're gonna play at the the like the Holy Grail, like the Crucible, you want to be playing the best players and Mark's no different. Uh, I was going in very confident in my game. I was very confident in giving them a good run because if, you, if you're going to play these top players, you want them in the first round. Yeah. Uh, so I think I called him a bit cold. Uh, he didn't play the greatest and that, neither did I. I think if I'd have stepped up my game a little bit, I think he was definitely there for the taking because I was 7-6 at one point and I knew he was struggling a little bit. And it was just a shame that I didn't really play a little bit better in my debut. But it's not easy that place. There was no crowd at all. There was no crowd. Um, that was the only sort of the only disappointing thing, you know. Is you, I think the crowd makes the atmosphere. 
in the crucible. Uh, so uh, this and that's I obviously hope to achieve that, you know, sooner rather than later, you know, want to get to the crucible again soon with, with a crowd, you know, and experience that. But uh, yeah, it was a great experience, you know, uh, getting to the crucible for the first time. And uh, yeah, uh, Mark won only beat me 10 6, and it wasn't the big. This, this is an odd question, perhaps, um, Jordan, and, and you can tell I'm not a player by the fact that I'm asking you it. Um, but are there certain players that you prefer playing against than others? You don't, obviously, you're probably not going to reveal who they are because you don't want to give them a, a <laughs> psychological edge. But Could be on the spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm, I'm imagining there's certain players you kind of rub your hands together with when you see the draw, and there's other players you think, oh, God, this is going to be a bit of a. A bit of a grind again. I don't know. How do, how do you, or, or do you just think this is in my control? It's up to me. Yeah, I think I've I've learned to get better, at sort of uh, concentrating on my own game rather than let players dictate. You know the game. You know for 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 both of us. Um, listen, we all want to play the, the quicker players. You know that you want to play the ones who get on with it and, and score, like sort of Ronnie and uh, Jack Lasowski. You you want you want to be playing the faster ones, but. Um, I think you sort of learned that you, that you have to adapt to any sort of match and be prepared for anything that's going to happen because they can all score, they can all play. Um, mm. It's just all about what you do. And I think I'm working closely with a sports psychologist at the minute and that's really, really helping me to sort of, you know, don't don't care about the other guy and just concentrate on what you have to do because you can only be in control of what you do. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy at times, but... You know, I've learned a couple of it a lot better as the as the as the, as the tour goes on. Yeah, it's such an important important part of the game, isn't it, Jordan? The the mental side, because yeah. you know, if you're not mental prepared, if you're in a bad place mentally, you can actually be sitting in your seat losing the match. Yeah, yeah, you're de you're defeating yourself. You know, you yeah. just sort of it can be it can be quite it could be quite daunting at times. You know, sitting in your seat and you you sort of have to. Have to stew on a on a miss, and you have to watch them make a big break. But all you can do, like I would tell any young junior, all you can do is just concentrate on the next ball and the next frame. But you just that's all you can do. It's just you know, just get the bad shot out of your mind and just concentrate on what the because you can do nothing about the past. You know, mm -hmm. it's only the future that matters, and you you, you quickly have to do something about it if you've you know if you've lost maybe a couple of frames in the shot. You know you. you you still have to go out there and, and do the business, you know.